It is the first painting I know of where the background is the subject of the painting. And that background is the night sky. It is true because to learn is to become closer to nature. And it's for a greater good in society. I would be irresponsible if I did not. The universe is immense, and yes, it can make you feel small, as it ought to. We all need an ego check. People like to think I'm special because I'm different, but there's a whole other way to look at it. Maybe you're special because you're the same. Uh, have I, by whatever powers I have available to me, have I lessened the suffering of others? Earth seen through the rings of Saturn. And just a reminder, we're, we are a speck in the middle of a cosmic void. And the more of us that feel the universe, the better off we will be in this world. Thank you. Perhaps one of the greatest science communicators of our time, Neil deGrasse Tyson has been educating people about the world around us for years. Not only is he incredibly knowledgeable, but his love for science and his ability to convey that passion is what sets him apart. His journey to becoming one of the most well-known astrophysicists started as early as nine years old. At 17, he would be invited to Cornell to meet with world-renowned astronomer Carl Sagan. Then I thought about it and I said, well, I had met Carl Sagan when I was 17. I was applying to colleges. He was at Cornell. I had been accepted at Cornell, but was, didn't know what college I wanted to go to. And the admissions office saw that I wasn't totally in the moment there. They for I didn't know this, they had forwarded my application to him for his reaction. I was already deep in the universe since I was nine. And he sent me a letter. He doesn't know me from Adam. I'm a 17 year old kid from the Bronx. He's a professor of astronomy at Cornell University. And I get this letter and I open it and it says, I understand you like the same stuff I like. Uh, do you wanna come visit the campus to help you decide if you wanna go to Cornell? It was like, whoa, this is, now he hadn't done Cosmos yet, that's how old I am, but he was already famous. He'd been on The Tonight Show and, you know, and had best-selling books. So I took him up on it. I took a bus up to Ithaca, New York. He met me outside his building on a Saturday, invited me up to his office, saw the labs. I'm there in front of him, he did something really cool. He reached back, didn't even look grabbed a book off the shelf. It was one of his books. <laughs> I thought that was the baddest, that was a badass thing. Don't even have to look. That's one of my books, yep. Okay, here. And he signed it to me. Neil Tyson, future astronomer, signed Carl. But that's not, that's only the half of it. Later in the day, I'm ready to go back to New York. It begins to snow, as it does often in December in Ithaca. And he says, here's my home number. If the bus can't get through from the snow, spend the night with my family and go back tomorrow. I'm thinking, who am I? Why, why? I'm nobody. But I was somebody to him. And I said to myself, if I'm ever as remotely famous as he is, I will treat students the way he has treated me. I already knew I wanted to become a scientist, but that afternoon, I learned from Carl the kind of person I wanted to become. Hi, James. Hi. So you look just like a kid astronaut. So, and you're about the right age that if we go to Mars for real, you're gonna be the right age then that we'll be sending you, okay? But before you go, make sure they have enough money to bring you back. If NASA wasn't created, what, what, would, happen to, what would happen to our universe? If, if NASA weren't around, yes. what would happen to our universe? Well, I can tell you this. If NASA weren't here, we would know a lot less about the universe. We wouldn't know a single thing about the universe. We'd just be, rummaging on Earth's surface, thinking that our solutions to all our problems come from looking down rather than from looking up. You got it, okay. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Jacob. And how old are you, Jacob? Nine. You're nine! <laughs> Jacob, I was nine when I first discovered the universe, or actually, the universe discovered me. I was in a planetarium and they, the lights went out and the stars came out and I was nine and my head exploded. And you will not be one of these idiots who were interviewed when the asteroid was coming saying, I'll go get drunk on the beach because you will figure out how to save the world. Thank you, Jacob. In 2014, Neil would become the host of Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, a follow-up to the original series created by Carl Sagan 34 years prior. 
Cosmos would go on to be translated into 45 languages, run across 181 countries, and be seen by over 750 million people. Neil continues to educate the public on the wonders of the universe through his radio show Star Talk. At the end of one of his Star Talk live shows, he reads for the audience one of the most impactful pieces of writing from Carl Sagan's Pale Blue Dot. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's, That's here. here. That's, That's home. home. That's, That's us. On it, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever lived out their lives, the aggregate of all our joys and sufferings. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant. Every young couple in love. Every hopeful child. Every mother and father. Every inventor and, and explorer, explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species. Live there, on the mote of dust, suspended in a sunbeam. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors, so that in glory and in triumph, they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings, how eager they are to kill one another, how fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. It's up to us. It's been said that astronomy is a humbling and, I might add, character-building experience. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit Yes. Settle. Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. To my mind, there is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish that pale blue dot, the, the only home we've ever known. Home.